Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've been invited to the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park, which has one of the largest collections of macro artifacts of any museum ship I'm aware of. And uh, besides Battleship Alabama, their next largest macro artifact is the submarine USS Drum here. Alabama is marginally, I won't say afloat, but in water. But USS Drum is here on dry land. And you've seen a number of uh, videos, which we've linked in the description below, uh, where I talk about how much I hate the idea of putting a museum ship on dry land permanently. There are exceptions to that, and I'm going to talk about why it was a good idea for Drum and why it may be a good idea for some other museum ships in similar circumstances to go on dry land like this. Uh, so, first off, you've got some really great interpretive capacity when you're interpreting your vessel out of the water. Now people don't just see the above water tip of the iceberg, they can see the whole thing. You wouldn't normally be able to see the stern diving planes or the propellers or the rudder on a regular museum ship. Uh, so this lets you see some really cool things that you can't otherwise see. Um, normally I would say that does not outweigh the destructive nature of having your ship on dry land. However, uh, Drum is old. She's one of the very first fleet-type submarines. She was the first one commissioned uh, and the first one to deploy during World War II. And uh, so she's got a couple of years on many of the other uh, museum subs. And she's been a museum ship for a long time. She hasn't had the Navy doing maintenance on her with their relatively infinite budget at least compared to a nonprofit. Uh, and, and so you can see in some of our videos the pitting along the hull of the boat uh, from years of being in a saltwater environment. Uh, so she had to come out of the water one way or another to fix that pitting. Uh, and when it's equivalently expensive to take her out of water, dry dock her and put her back in the water, or just take her out of water forever and do that maintenance work at your leisure as you're able to raise the money, I, there's an argument to be made to do it in this way. And my biggest issue with taking a museum ship out of the water is that, uh, I've said this a hundred times before, but water is pressing in at all sides. So it is holding your boat together. You put a ship on dry land and gravity is pushing up, but there's nothing pushing in on the sides. So the ground pushes up, the gravity pushes down, and your ship slowly pancakes. Not going to be a problem for 10 years, but 50, 100 years, we're, we're trying to preserve these boats indefinitely, that will cause your boat to pancake for a ship like Battleship New Jersey. For a round boat, like the submarine drum, she is designed to distribute that pressure in all directions. So she is not going to pancake in the way that a traditional surface ship would. And I have far less concern that uh, her only being supported from the bottom is going to cause long-term preservation issues. There are certainly some issues where the steel and the concrete that it's sitting on uh, is going to corrode faster than the rest of this that you can treat. And you can't really get under there uh, to treat it. But you're able to preserve the rest of the boat and you're not worried about her being able to float. So. You want to get your museum ship out of the water. Uh, some smaller vessels you might be able to crane up, but uh, a fleet type submarine's like 2,000 tons. That's not going to be too doable. Even unloaded, still hundreds and hundreds, more than 1,000 tons. So, what you would do is you would dig a channel then pull your boat into that channel uh, and then backfill the land around it. Uh, jack it up and then put the permanent system, your, your cement blocks or whatever you may use uh, for your boat under it. So uh, that's great. You have done that. The issue is your museum ship is still very close to whatever body of water it came out of. There are many submarines and uh, minesweepers or other small craft that are out of water. 
uh, but they always tend to be near rivers. And so every couple of years when a major storm blows through, you hear about how the river rises and it refloats the vessel and drags them back out to sea. So you'll notice as part of the permanent, uh, I'm used to calling it a permanent mooring system, they're not quite moored, but uh, their port permanent system here that they're sitting on, the boat is chained to the concrete blocks that she's on so that if the river rises to here, which did happen during Hurricane Katrina, the boat is not going to float off of her blocks and then float away and set down somewhere else that's not designed to support her. Another thing that helps with this is the holes that they cut inside the shell plating for maintenance work. Check the uh, video in the link in the description. Uh, if that link doesn't go anywhere yet, it's going to go live tomorrow. Check it out tomorrow when it airs at 7 uh, Eastern time. But that the maintenance work that they're doing involves cutting holes in the boat, which means that water is going to fill the tanks and hold the boat where she is. So that is great for long-term preservation. There's also a link in the description below to the Historic Naval Ships Association website that has a map of where all these museum ships are. Check it out. Some of their locations, like the ones in the center of the United States, may surprise you. And have you ever visited a museum ship that's on dry land like this one? Let us know in the comments section down below which one you have. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, as well as a number of other businesses and individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support, and the Battleship Alabama, USS Drum, and the rest of their uh, park here would appreciate your support as well. There's a link in the description to their YouTube channel if you would like to check out the work that they're doing, and uh, to their donation page if you would like to support the ongoing restoration projects on the submarine drum. Thanks for watching.